Hello. And good evening. Welcome to Cape and Ray. My name is Matty. And my name is Hester, and we are on the Bible School staff team here at Cape and Ray. Thank you so much for coming along and watching this evening. We've had so much fun this year putting together our Christmas presentation. Yes, this year has been full of the unexpected. And even though you can't join us here in person at Cape and Ray for our student Christmas presentation, we pray that wherever you're watching from tonight, this would bring you some hope at home. So all through the evening, me and Hester are going to be on the chat. So please get involved. Come along, tell us where you're watching from. Tell us if you've been to Bible school or on a holiday. Uh, tell us what year you were here. We'd love to hear some of your memories about this place. Yep, and so without further ado, let's begin with a time of worship together. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. From nothingness, God spoke, and out exploded the universe. He breathed life into every living creature that walks, crawls, or swims. This is the start of the journey of hope, and where our salvation story begins. We were made in the image of God, created for love and for joy. But we have a very real enemy who seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. This is exactly what he did in the Garden of Eden, breaking the relationship between us and him. And the start of our salvation story, inescapably, also begins with sin. You see, the very first man chose to turn away from God and to follow his own desire, not to listen to the basic instructions, but to try and build his own empire. And that left the relationship between man and God broken, torn, and shattered. This left man spiritually and emotionally scattered. And survival now was the only thing that mattered. For a while, it seemed that God had given up on man, but nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing is wasted with God, not even the wasteful things we do. For we know that in all things, God works for good. And because he is love, it means he never gives up on us. So a plan was afoot, a story was building. A savior is promised to make us his children. It doesn't seem right, it doesn't seem fair or just, but let me make this clear one more time. He is love. There is hope on the horizon, a promise that we can cling on to, that we are not wandering around alone, but that there is a father that we belong to. And as I said at the start, there is a plan to get us reconnected. It's not even close to what we thought we wanted, but what we needed was the unexpected. Let's pray. Father God, 
This year, we come to you at Christmas time, and we reflect on a year of unexpected challenges and changes. Tonight, we thank you for the promises in your word. You are our wonderful counselor. You are our mighty God. You are our everlasting Father. You are our Prince of Peace. Tonight, we pray for people in our country who have been on the front line of this pandemic. For doctors, nurses, researchers, and key workers, we ask that you would be their wonderful counselor. For those who are leaders in guiding our nation and making key decisions in this pandemic, tonight, Lord, would they know you as their mighty God. For our schools and young people whose lives have been impacted in so many unexpected ways, for the next generation, Lord, would they know you as their everlasting Father. For those watching tonight at home who feel lonely, isolated, and afraid, Lord, would they know you close as their Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Hey. Hi. Hi. Are you? Yep. I didn't expect... <laughs> I would have put something nicer on. Don't worry about it. It's fine. What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm just here to watch my people. Oh. I didn't think you actually watched us like this. I thought you liked to keep your distance. What gave you that impression? Well, you don't speak to everyone, only a couple of prophets. Well... And even then, you don't speak directly to them. Well... You use angels sometimes, well, or weird things like bushes, well, or donkeys. You finished? Yeah, sorry. Just excited. Well... And nervous. Sorry, I'm doing it again. I'll stop. Well... That's the way it has to be for now. For now? Yeah. For now. It's not always going to be like this, though. It's not. No. Haven't you read my word? Well, as my prophet Isaiah said, there was someone coming. Someone who's going to change things for my people. That's right. The rabbi told us at the temple. He said he was going to be a prince, right? And he's going to be like this mighty warrior who's going to save us all and bring justice. Not quite. Isaiah did say that he was going to be a prince, but he was a prince of peace. And he certainly won't come wielding a sword to deal out justice. He's not going to be what you're expecting. He's not. So, if he's not going to be a mighty warrior, then what? Humanity is in a state. Your people are suffering and beginning to lose hope. We need a king. Someone who's going to come and defeat our enemies. He will be a king. But he will be the king of kings. And he's coming to defeat the enemy. Right now, humanity is lost. You are far away from me. You have forgotten my ways and have twisted promises I made to Abraham and David to mean something they're not. You see, you're right. 
you do need a savior. But he's not going to come riding on a huge steed to crush whichever rulers you don't like. You need more than that. What do you mean we need more than that? As Isaiah promised, my prince is coming to bring about my kingdom. He's going to restore me to the rightful place in your lives, your hearts. He will offer freedom and healing, restoration and forgiveness. Forgiveness? That doesn't sound like any king I've ever heard of. Yeah, forgiveness. He will restore the relationship between me and mankind once and for all. So, what will he look like? Who should we look out for? Well, he's going to come to you as a baby. A baby? So he'll be human? Yes. But if he grows up here, then surely he'll be just like the rest of us, won't he? No. He will be my son. He'll be fully God and fully man. He will have one purpose and one desire, and that is to do my will. He'll be perfect and obedient, even unto death, even death on a cross. Death? What are you talking about death for? I thought he was supposed to rule your kingdom forever. He will, but my kingdom is not of this world. So when is he coming? Soon. How will you recognize him? How will we know he's the one you're talking about? He will perform signs and miracles. He will heal the sick, restore the broken, raise the dead to life, and he alone will have the power and authority to offer forgiveness for sins. How can he offer forgiveness? It's like you said earlier, humanity is in a state. They are far away from me. There is hurting, loneliness, brokenness, and disease. My son is coming to fulfill my plan to bring hope and light in these dark times. How will he do all this? He will live the perfect life. He will offer himself as a sacrifice. He will die and be raised to life again. Just as Adam, one man, brought sin into this world, so the Messiah, one man, will offer the payment for those sins. He's going to do all that for us? He is. And you're going to send your son to die? I am. Why? Because I love you. So what can I do? You can't do anything. It's not about what you can do. It's about what he will do. All you have to do is believe in who he says he is and in who I am. I didn't expect this. A baby who will save the world. Who can I tell?
treasures, shepherds bow low, angel voices sing. I have had so much time to kill at home lately. Ever since my job was furloughed, I have been on every search board trying to find jobs. I've even sorted through my attic to try to find things to sell. While my garden has never looked better, my savings, well, overall finances have needed a lot of maintenance. So I found myself on a rabbit trail on Google the other night. I'm sure you know what I mean after searching how to pay off mountains of debt. And after clicking through articles on how to save money and watching YouTube videos on the importance of a retirement plan so I can take that cruise of a lifetime, I, did, I decided to sign up for a financial seminar. They were talking about compound interest and how you can build wealth over time by squirreling a little bit of money away every month. I decided to sign up for a financial seminar. They were talking about compound interest and how you can build wealth over time just by squirreling money away a little bit every month. I could follow that. So say you deposit $200 a month into an account at a, per at a certain percent. That money collects interest and that interest collects on the interest. So for somebody that has four years of student loans to pay off on top of a car payment, you could imagine how this compound interest concept was appealing. So say you deposit $200 a month into a fund at a decent rate of return over 30 years, you could become a millionaire. Awesome idea, right? But guess how I felt after the seminar though? I mean, here I am without a job, a big pile of debt, wishing someone had recommended to me to not lease a new car after I just graduated and instead put that money into a mutual fund. I started to feel a bit discouraged 
I can't go back and do things over financially. And I just had way too much time on my hands and a smartphone in my pocket. And I just started looking up every what if scenario. I've never really done this before, but I typed in four letters into my search bar. Can you guess what they were? H-O-P-E. Where can I find hope? I didn't find hope in my Google search. I can tell you that much. And after I walked towards feelings of regret, wishing I had my job back and that I had been smarter with my money, I realized I was just having a pity party and I needed to go outside and get some fresh air. So I saw that the mail had just been delivered and so I walked to the mailbox and my grandma's Christmas card had just arrived, just like it does every other year. And on the front of the card, it read, hope of the world. And when I turned it over, on the inside was a drawing of Mary holding the little baby Jesus. And that verse from Luke that says, but Mary treasured up all these words, pondering in her heart what they might mean. Mary treasured up all the things that God was doing in, in her circumstances and in her heart. And as I stood there with the snow coming down and the card and envelope in one hand and the $10 bill in the other, I looked up at the sky and I just, I just had to laugh. And right then and there, I repented. And I asked God to forgive me for getting so discouraged about my circumstances when his spirit and his son are living right inside here. And suddenly I felt like the richest person in the world. What a treasure there is in this heart of mine. So Mary treasured all the things that God was doing. This, this miracle of a story that God sent his only son into the world to be born of a woman, to be born of, of, as a baby, to live the perfect life, to set us free from sin and despair. Wow! This miracle of a story has been treasured in the hearts of those like Mary ever since the day Jesus was born. And in the Gospel of Luke, all of those words have been read f by people across the centuries. Just imagine the compound interest that's been accumulated in the hearts of believers. <laughs> oh, the riches of the glory of God in, in all of us, in this world. And as I stood there with the snow coming down, I, I just, I felt like I needed to, to, to store up this truth of God's word and let it multiply and grow in me so that my heart becomes a reservoir of hope. Let it compound and accumulate. But friends, I have to tell you, I felt something else so deeply as well. Like my grandma, by, by, who by the world standards has very little, but gives so much. So much that this $10 gift feels like $10,000. We, we just can't hoard all this hope to ourselves. Spend it. Give it away. The world needs it. If, if you and I, believers in God, believers in Christ, get discouraged in this season, how much more will those that don't yet know him need that hope? Go, tell it on the mountains, shout it from the rooftop. And as you ponder the wonder of God's truth and the riches and wealth build up inside you, 
give that hope away. Yeah. 
those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. So everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the child to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there were no guest rooms available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring to you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Let this be a sign to you. You will find him wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Let's pray. Father God, tonight we thank you for your good message of good news of great joy. We thank you for the unexpected way you came to this earth. We thank you that laying in that manger was the hope of all the world, Jesus. We thank you that no matter how many unexpected things happen in our lives, we can trust and hope in the one who came to seek and save. We praise you in a world where unexpected circumstances come our way. Because you, Lord, remind us that we can find good news and great joy in your message of hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It starts with a young couple, obedient to what they heard, trusting in God's promises and trusting in His Word. A promise. A promise is all we have. A promise of a king. When you plan for the ordinary, the unexpected will change everything. We join a hillside with the shepherds watching their sheep when a host of angels appear above them and rouse them from their sleep. A baby boy was born tonight in a town not too far away. Go, go and worship, sing praises to the Savior born today. At the same time, a star ignites a million miles away, but shines so bright all through the night to guide wise men on their way. Mary and Joseph, in a stable in Bethlehem, give birth to the small boy. This promise from God, this gift of life, who bring forgiveness, hope and joy. This baby would not stay small forever, but would grow to be a man, would listen to his father's will and follow his salvation plan. Adore, oh, come let us adore him, the savior of mankind, who would raise the dead, heal the sick and give sight to the blind. The perfect life would become the perfect death for humanity's debt to be paid beaten and tortured and nailed to a cross as all sin on him was laid. Let our eyes refocus on the here and now, on the joy we have today, as we celebrate the birth of Christ, this baby boy led in the hay. For he would go on to be the King of men, the Prince of Peace, the forgiver of our sin. This year at home, we need this hope, so let the celebrations begin.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things are made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was a light to all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Let's pray. Father God, when we look at the world today, it can be hard to see hope and to see light. But tonight, we thank you that when we look to you, we see the one through whom all things were made and the light of the world. We ask that tonight, Lord, your light and your hope would enter and shine into the lives of every home watching. As we look to the year ahead, Lord, to 2021, may we be a people of hope. And even when the unexpected comes, would you help us to put our trust in you each and every day. Hope has a name, and his name is Jesus Christ, the light of the world. You are the God of all hope, of all joy, and of all peace. And we ask you, Lord, that you will fill our hearts and our homes this Christmas time with your hope, with your joy, and with your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good evening. It's really wonderful to be able to share with you for a few moments this evening. As we begin, I want you to take a few minutes and think back to last Christmas. Don't worry, I'm not going to break into song, but I wonder what last Christmas was like for you. For me, it was a bit of a mixed experience. I really enjoyed spending Christmas here at Cape May with the guests who came for the Christmas holiday and had planned to celebrate Christmas with um, family later in December when everyone's work commitments would allow. The plan was to have the traditional big meal. The food was ready and we were going to have one of those afternoons where you eat so much that you're sort of uncomfortable you then sit in a warm room and try and get some conversation going as you avoid sleeping. That was the plan. But the night before we'd planned to do it, I caught one of those uh, stomach bugs that you sometimes get around that time of year. And it wasn't particularly pleasant. But because I'm a, a, ch a caring sort of chap, um, I passed that on to other family members. And by the time we were ready to celebrate Christmas, it was already 2020 and we were back in the routine of school and work. I can remember thinking then, I hope 2020 is better than this. That's what we often mean by hope, isn't it? A, a, a wish or a desire that things might get better. Fingers crossed. But maybe there's more to hope than that. 2020 didn't get much better. Although we can look back and we can be thankful for lots of different things, it has been a challenging and difficult year for many. Many families have experienced the loss of a loved one. Many have been ill, both physically and um, strongly mentally or emotionally. It's been a year of financial uncertainty, a year where we've come familiar with the words separation and isolation. And that's why Christmas is so important. Christmas is about hope. Not just a wish that things might get better, but a sure hope, a certain hope, a living hope, a hope of glory. This evening, we've been reminded by the students of some of the wonderful things of Christmas. We've been reminded in drama and song and music. And we've cast our mind back to the Christmas story. This incredible account of a baby born in a stable. The wonder that this baby is God himself. That God who created the heavens and the earth. The one who created all that we see and know. The one who made us. Steps into this tiny Earth, this tiny creation is made as a baby in a stable. We've pondered over the, just the amazing truth that that is. The, the wonder of it, the humility of it, the love that that shows. But the story continues. Jesus knows what it is to, be, to feel separation, to be isolated, to, to live in uncertain times. But he grows and lives a life full of grace and truth. Remarkably, then God the Son is betrayed, goes through the, the sham of a fake trial and is nailed to a Roman cross. In this incredible act of sacrificial love, Jesus takes all the sin of the world. That means he takes all our nastiness our arrogance, our rebellion, our self-centeredness. He takes it all on himself. And then wonderfully, three days later, he's, he rises again from the grave. He beats all the nastiness and sin and destruction. He's too good. He's too God. He's too powerful. He's too awesome for these things to hold him. And then, as if that wasn't triumphal and amazing enough, he then comes to live within the hearts and lives of those who trust in him, those who want to follow him. This really is good news. 
This is experiencing forgiveness. This is living free. This is knowing hope. The God of the universe doesn't only come to this world, but he comes to live in our hearts. This really is amazing. Now we don't need to, to pull our resources together to try our best to, to be who we want to be, but God comes to live his life in us. Paul talks about this mystery and he says this, this mystery is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christmas is often a time for looking back. Hopefully in the next few weeks, you'll get a chance to look back on some Christmases from the past. Maybe remember some great memories. Maybe to remember some difficult times as well. It's also a time we look forward and we wonder, I wonder what it'll be like next Christmas. I wonder what next Christmas will bring. Well, we can look back on the Christmas story and see all that Jesus has done for us. And as he comes to live within our hearts, we can look forward with a, this sure hope, this certain hope of glory. As I close, I just want to mention what that hope of glory looks like. And it looks like many things, but here are three. The hope of glory is that Jesus within us is transforming us. He's changing us. We're becoming more and more like him. Christ in us, the hope of glory, means that as we move forward, we're being transformed. Christ in us, the hope of glory, also means that as, as God himself lives within us, the eternal God, the one who made everything, then whatever season we're passing through, if it's a season of joy and contentment, or a season of change, or a season of challenge or uncertainty, then it's a season of significance. It's a season of meaning, because God himself is walking through it with us. And of course, ultimately, Christ knows the hope of glory gives us an eternal hope. As the eternal God comes to live within us, so his blessings are eternal. This is what Peter says in 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 3. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Unexpected. Hope at home. This year, why not go back and read the Christmas story again? But don't stop there. See how the story gets better and more amazing as it continues on and brings us a real, sure, certain hope. A hope of glory. If this last year has taught us anything, it's that the world we live in is uncertain and that nothing is sure. But if we know Jesus, we have a hope that is sure and certain. If you don't know him, why not give him your life today?
o Deus de toda esperança encha vocês de alegria e paz na fé que vocês têm, para que sejam ricos em esperança no Espírito Santo. İmam yıllardan yorarın kez. Ümid manbayı bölgen hudu kalbengi sevinç ve teşlikle toldırsın. Şimdi sizler muqaddas ruhunin küçüge ege ümidke boy bolaslar. Mogen de God nu van de hoop u vervullen met alle blijdschap en vrede in het geloven, opdat u overvloedig bent in de hoop door de kracht van de Heilige Geest. Hoopets Gud fylle jer met al glæde og fred i troen, så de bliver rige i håbet ved Helligåndens kraft. Que le Dieu de l'espérance vous remplisse de toute joie et de toute paix dans la foi, pour que vous abondiez en espérance par la puissance du Saint-Esprit. Bog je nadjež da ispunit vas vsake radost i mira vjeri, da bi vi sile i duha svetov obogatili s nadježdaju. Möge Gott, wo die Quelle von aller Hoffnung ist, euch im Glauben mit aller Freude und allem Frieden erfüllen, dass eure Hoffnung durch die Kraft des Heiligen Geistes immer stärker wird. Möge was Bog, wo die Nadu, ispunit vas schon in mir und Vieri, möge am Dade isubilu Nadu aus Nazi Svetoga Ducha. Möge Gott die Quelle der Hoffnung euch in eurem Glauben mit Freude und Frieden erfüllen, damit eure Hoffnung durch die Kraft des Heiligen Geistes immer stärker wird. Que el Dios de la esperanza les llene de toda alegría y paz a ustedes que creen en él, para que rebosen de esperanza por el poder del Espíritu Santo. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, verse 13. As we come to a close this evening, we just want to say a few thank yous. Firstly, we want to thank you guys for watching this presentation, hopefully from the comfort of your own home. Yeah, and we've got a few special thank yous to say as well. Thank you so much to our talented students, of course, for all of their hard work. Thank you so much too to Ian Ellishaw for that fantastic message of hope. And thank you too to Charlotte Coe for all her work with the musicians and with the choir. And thank you too to um, Purple Videos, of course, who've put all this together for us. Well, Hester, that's not quite it yet, is it? No, we actually have one extra little surprise for you this evening. So, some friends of Cape and Rears have put a special song together for us to see the night off. Yep, and this year we've chosen to support two different charities. One is Unique Kids, a local children's charity, and one is to give to our sponsored student fund uh, here at Cape and Ray. Uh, to support students coming in the future. So if you'd like to donate, thank you so much for your generosity and the instructions of how to do that should be appearing on the screen right now. So sit back and enjoy this final song from special friends from Cape and Bay. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. That's bye from us. And have a wonderful Christmas. Bye. <laughs> Enjoy this Christmassy video, so so please sit back and enjoy. Thank you.
Christmas, everyone. Thank you, God, for bringing Jesus to the world as a baby so we can be his friends. Amen. Wasn't that absolutely wonderful? I want to thank uh, everyone so much for their participation in this. It's been a really good production. I want to thank you as well for joining. Thank you for watching from wherever you are in the world and wonderful you can join us in this way. I want to thank you as well. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your donations in these past months. They've been challenging, but it's, it's so good to now be open and have a Bible school. Let me share um, just a couple of verses from the end of 2 Thessalonians chapters 2 and 3. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word and may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with you all. Happy Christmas from us all at Cape and Ray. God bless you.